Hey, it's Charlie again. How's everybody doing? Hey, I had just gotten a comment from a friend of mine who uh, doesn't know anything about turbochargers and wanted a very simple explanation of what they are, how they work, and some little details about it without going over people's heads. So I got some examples here and I'll walk through what a turbocharger is, some of the different ways they function, and some of the basics about the turbos. So a turbocharger is basically, to put it simply, it's an exhaust-driven air compressor. So a turbocharger is split into two sides. You have the exhaust side right here that is mounted to the exhaust manifold, and you can see the flange bolts that would be hooked up to an exhaust manifold right there. As the exhaust is leaving the engine, it spools up the the turbo in here and connected over here is the compressor side of the turbo so you have exhaust air and fresh air the two sides do not meet in the middle they're separated but there is a shaft that connects this wheel to this wheel so that when the exhaust spins this one the compressor wheel will spin drawing fresh air through your air filter compressing it and then sending what we call the boosted air pressure to your intake so the main thing that we need to know is how does the different ways we can control it? How does boost change? How does it stay the same? And so forth. And generally speaking, we have two types of uh, different turbochargers that you might encounter. Uh, so we'll start with an older version here, and this is called a wastegate turbo. Now, a wastegate turbo operates by having what's simply called a wastegate that opens and closes that will is essentially acting as a bypass for this impeller wheel. <clears throat> if this wastegate is all the way in the closed position like this, then all of the exhaust gas is hitting that compressor wheel, giving it full speed. But then when boost reaches a certain point, a device similar to this one will be connected to the outlet. So when boost pressure reaches a certain point, it will pull the actuator or push the actuator, causing the wastegate to open. When the wastegate opens, the exhaust uh, gas will pass out through this passage because it's the path of least resistance, which means that this guy will slow down and your boost pressure will decrease. So a lot of times if you hear the turbo and you hear that sound from the turbo, that's us bypassing that exhaust out the pipe. So this is something that's still pretty popular on hot rods and cars and stuff like that. Um, but on most of your modern uh, trucks and equipment, you're going to move over to what's known as variable geometry turbos. Variable geometry turbos uh, are the same thing. They're an exhaust driven air compressor. <clears throat> so if you look at this one right here, you still have the exhaust side. You still have the uh, compressed air side. So if we look at it, this one that we're looking at right now is a vane type variable geometry turbo, sometimes referred to as a VNT. So if you look inside here, you can see there's these little veins that close and open. So this operates off the principle that if you try to push airflow through a narrow opening, the velocity of that airflow is going to increase. If that opening spreads out, then the airflow speed, the velocity of it is going to decrease. So on this specific turbo, instead of bypassing the exhaust gas away from this impeller wheel, all we do is we change the angle of these blades. So the tighter I make these blades, the faster the velocity of the exhaust gas is gonna hit this impeller wheel. And you can see it right here that when I spin the impeller wheel that the compressor wheel turns. So that's what I meant that they were connected by a shaft. So basically variable geometry means that we don't bypass like we did throughout. I'm sorry, I got interrupted there. So the air that leaves this turbo has to go through that charged air cooler in order to get to the intake so they can cool it down and make that oxygen rich, dense air that we want getting to the cylinders. So now we're going to take a look at a turbo on an actual engine. So you can see what I was saying, you got the exhaust driven side of the air compressor over here. So it's attached to the exhaust manifold. So all the exhaust flow leaving this Cummins ISX is going to be traveling through this turbocharger before it leaves and goes out the exhaust pipe. That's going to cause the compressor wheel over here on this side to spin 
and then that cold compressed air or that hot compressed air is going to travel through this piping and it's going to come to this charge air cooler on the front of the radiator so you can see down here here's the radiator behind the charge air cooler so all that air coming through the grill or being pulled through by the fan comes down and cools that air that's been heated up by the turbo so now when it leaves the charge air cooler you got cold air or not cold but cooler air coming through here and then eventually heading into the intake manifold so these are essential components for a turbo to operate well in the past just for fun we've taken these uh, hoses and bypassed this charge air cooler and i can tell you that the difference in how the engine runs is significant on these diesels um, i've not done the experiment with an automotive turbo but i'm sure it's probably not much different either way regardless you don't want superheated air in your engine but I hope this uh, turbo video kind of explained what the turbo does, some of the things that it, uh, ways that they can be operated. Um, and I hope that uh, you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments or anything else like this you would like me to talk about, please let me know. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you guys very much for watching.